Hello everybody, my name is Sheila SL Reads, and today I'm going to be doing my July wrap-up and my August TBR. This month I read three books. I started a few other ones, but those are going to be in the TBR section because I did not finish most of them, so let's just get right into it. So the first book that I finished this month was If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I read this as an ebook. This is a campus set murder mystery. It has a lot of similarities to The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which is a book that I also really enjoy, but my favorite thing about it is that it does involve Shakespeare students. All the characters are actors at this weird liberal arts sort of college. I believe it's set in like the 90s, the early 2000s. It's really not clear when it's set. I don't think. I really enjoyed this. Like I said, it does have a lot of similarities to The Secret History, which is partially because of the type of novel that it is. One thing that I did not really like is that the main character isn't really all that interesting. He's kind of like the least talented of all of the other characters. They are all a lot better at acting or a lot better at Shakespeare in general, and he's kind of just this outlier who's not all that great at anything, which does seem to be a strength that you talk about that within the novel, and he is known to be oblivious in the novel. So kind of all of his faults are like mentioned. Like, he knows everything everyone knows. As for the murder mystery aspect of this novel, I had like a few people I was like pinning it on because it seemed like they could have done it, but I was still kind of like shocked and like shook <laughs> just as Oliver, our main character, was when you find out who actually did commit the murder. And the murder is very gruesome because you also don't know like how it's committed, you just like know there's like a body and the the wound is described kind of gruesomely but like you don't really know what happened. I feel like the mystery aspect of it was absolutely fantastic. It was told in acts and scenes just as Shakespeare's plays are and also the entire thing focused on Shakespeare's tragedies which are my favorite genre of Shakespeare plays. I was just having a great time all around. Fantastic. The next book that I read this month was I See London, I See France by Sarah Mlinowski. This is a European travel novel with a girl and her best friend going on a European adventure for about a month or four or five weeks I believe. All they're on this trip they run into a lot of roadblocks and issues, obstacles that they have to overcome, such as one of the characters' exes being on the plane. And I did not particularly like this novel. There are just a lot of things that made me cringe a little about this novel. There's a lot of girl hate, like unnecessarily, but at the same time there was like talking about how like, oh this guy is gonna cheat on you, but like you should definitely like choose him over your best friend who you've known forever. And so it was very confusing. There were lots of instances in which they were just like, oh, like, those girls are gonna kick us out because they want the men to themselves, and, like, just girl hate calling girls bitches just because, like, they gave them a dirty look or something. And I know this is something that is not completely uncommon, but I'm very against girl hate in novels. If you're trying to be, like, out there, then just do, like, positivity and loving girls, but that's not what was happening here. I thought I was going to like it because I saw some other booktubers had liked it and I just really did not enjoy it. I'm going to link my review to that and all the books that I've read this month down below. And then the third and final book that I read this month was Raven Song by TJ Klune. This is the sequel to Wolf Song, which is a book that I read way early this year. I think it was one of the first books that I finished and I absolutely love that. Both books are part of the Green Creek series, which is a series about queer werewolves living in a small town in Oregon, which is just like, it's a fun premise all around. I was really interested in the way that this book took things to the next level. Like it kind of seemed like the antagonists in the first novel, they were all dealt with. And so I knew that there would have to be something that was brought up in this novel, but it kind of expanded the universe. And, and not just that, but also just showed like more duality to different characters and to different situations where I was definitely like very stressed out because TJ Klune was talking about this in an interview and he's like yeah it's just like everything goes boom and I was like okay he's just like talking it's gonna be intense no there's actual explosions in this novel and I was like what the hell it really plays out a lot like a movie I feel like Wolfsong did not really do that but Ravensong definitely did like everything was like a movie there were like these really intense fight scenes but the romance was still there I believe this is classified as a romance novel it's just like very intense romance novel. Also there was a lot in this that sets up the next few books, especially like the epilogue scene, as well as setting up the romances for the next two novels because each novel is told from a different character's perspective but also focuses on a different romance. I was also really happy because I ordered the book from the publisher's website and I ordered the paperback and it came with a free ebook and so I got to read it right away even though my paperback has not arrived yet and I don't know when it's coming but I can't wait because then I'm going to put it on my bookshelf and like cry over it. Overall, I really enjoyed it. It was fantastic. Like I said, I will be linking my review to that down below. So now we are on to my August TBR. The I'm currently in the middle of three books, and so I'll just start with those. The first of these is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is a book that I've been reading for a few months now. It is an adult fantasy novel. It is also super long, and I really enjoy it so far. I'm about 170 pages into this. I was reading this on a plane to Alaska, and I just got kind of to the point where I was like, I cannot process this anymore. The next book is The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hira Arikawa. So this book is actually 
actually my first arc ever because this book is getting republished by a different publisher with this adorable cover. I am not that far into it. I did not even realize that I won this giveaway on Goodreads, but I did. And I was very shocked when I got this in the mail. I was like, did I order a book recently? Like, there was like a span where I had not ordered anything. And I was like, what is this? I have no clue what this could possibly be. But this is told from the perspective of a cat, which I think is very interesting. I love cats. I have a cat. One second. So as someone who has and adores cats, I feel like this is going to be a very interesting story. Lots of people describe it as it has the feel of a Studio Ghibli movie, but in a book form. And I feel like that is definitely something I want to see because I do love Studio Ghibli. But I've also heard that this book is a little heartbreaking and so I'm a little nervous. Because the next book that I want to finish in August is Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. I bought this because this is one of the main plays that is in If We Were Villains. And I think the play that they're acting out at the time of the murder that's dusty. One of my friends really enjoys Julius Caesar and I've heard so much about it for so long and so I wanted to pick it up. I'm about halfway through the second act or something. It is very interesting and I'm really enjoying it. This book I picked up in my Alaska etc haul so you can go check that out if you want to see what else I bought. I told myself I wasn't gonna read any more Shakespeare plays until like next year because I read so many this year and then I just broke that rule by buying plays and reading them. And the final book that I'm hoping to read in August is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I tried to read this book like last year or something I got it from the library or I borrowed it from someone. I wasn't really able to get that into it. I only got like 50 pages in which I feel like is not a good place to stop because sometimes it takes that long to establish the characters before you introduce like the main plot or the main problem within the novel. And so I had like just gotten to the problem and I was like this is stressing me out. But then people were like oh this has like a fake dating trope in it which is really something I've only seen in fan fiction and so I was really interested to see it in an actual published book and see how uh, it plays out in a more realistic fashion. <laughs> the movie is coming out on August 17th, I believe, is a Netflix adaptation of this book, and I've watched the trailer, like, religiously. Like, I don't even know the characters, and I'm still obsessed with it. <laughs> so that is the end of my July wrap-up and August TBR. Like I said, I am linking my three reviews for the books I read in July down below. And also, if you do want to connect with me on any social media, all those links are down below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!